These are very purified mirrors. What you see of what you don't like is actually you. Your interaction with them is merely Allah showing who you are. The Prophet described that the believer, mu'min, is a mirror to his brother and sister. And that our life is a reflection and one whom is busy purifying themselves so that to take away the bad character and the tarnish and the zikr, the istighfar, the awrads that are given are like the bucket of solutions. That each tariqah is given a bucket put these solutions and have the students recite. These are the washing principles of how to purify the mirror. So every awrad that we're doing, the zikrs we're doing, the associations we're doing, these are all cleaning solutions. And the, these lights, these energies are continuously washing, washing. And the tariqahs busy not looking at people but looking at myself. Every situation that comes, all that Allah is interested in, how are you going to react to it? And how are you going to resolve it? And what type of character and tools do you have to perfect your character? So then our life is a series of tests, imtihans, difficulties, trials and tribulation all to purify. So when Prophet described the mu'min that not just the one whom and everybody is a mirror but to be warned that the ones whom are building themselves, cleaning themselves, the lights of faith are slowly entering into their reality. You're polishing and as a result you will be a reflection to people that when they look to you they don't see you, they see themselves. These subjects are very deep, it's not easy to pass over quickly. It means that when they look to the shaykh they see all their bad characteristics. That's why the turuqs, the guides and the importance of having a guidance. Have you ever seen somebody try to beautify themselves with no eyes? Because no mirror means you can't see. You can't see what your hair looks like, you can't see what your face looks like, you can't see if you combed your beard, you don't know what color you wore. You're not able to see yourself. So when they can't see, God bless them, Allah give them more, somebody has to help them. But for our understanding of the analogy is that why you need guidance? It's because you can't see yourself. You can't see what you're doing, what you're saying, how you're acting and to Allah you're just ugly. You're not taking care of, you're ungroomed. So they come with like a wild character, wild appearance. Not only physically they may have clothes that are all nice but we're talking about the analogy of yourself and your nafs. We speak in allegories. Why Prophet gave this hadith, one of its understandings was for guidance. You can't guide yourself, you don't see what you're, you're comprised of, you don't see how you're dressing yourself with character and you can't go before Allah the King of all creation with this look and this appearance, this character, this khuluq. So what you need is a mirror. So somebody tells you you're going to have the most important interview in your life for work, for job, for marriage, whatever it is in, in your life. Could you imagine not taking care of your appearance? 
then how would you go before Allah And that's why this was a hadith for guidance in one of its realities and many, many deep realities. Nabi Musa salam, when he asked, Ya Rabbi I want to see you, I want to see who I'm speaking to, Allah said, you can't see me but I'll show you one of my greatest signs. He witnessed what he had to witness, Qashya and was completely effaced, went to zero point down, brought back to life and witnessed what he witnessed, took the Muhammadan reality now what al Muslimin renewed his faith that what I witnessed of realities, I want that reality. So then there's always one on and one off because the mirror is the binary code. Who's on and who's off? If both on, there are no mirrors, they're just back and forth and both of them blind. But when Allah asks for a Prophet of Allah that go to one of my mirrors, go to one whom is highly purified in these realities, then what was the dialogue in Surat Al-Kahf about Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Khidr And that becomes an awareness for ourselves, doesn't matter what your rank is, doesn't matter how how big somebody thinks they are. When Allah want to test them, put them before a mirror, the mirror is telling him that you're not going to have patience with me. And in their dialogue all of the events that were happening, Sayyidina Musa was preoccupied to say what you're doing is wrong. So he's the student, Sayyidina Khidr is the shaykh. He asked for guidance, Sayyidina Khidr didn't ask to find a student, he didn't pray to Allah, please send me students. One is the student, one is the shaykh. In this example from the great prophets of Allah Allah sanctify their secrets and raise them higher, Allah is allowing us to use that example from Holy Qur'an. He's coming, I want to know of a knowledge to make me rushed. In this haqqaiq of Sayyidina Muhammad he takes the role of the student, he goes to the teacher. Goes to the teacher and says, teach me from these knowledges to make me rushed, cooked, ready. The teacher says, you won't have patience because the little bit that you know, you're going to keep trying to find fault in me. because this is our life example. And every test that came which we said was the boat, he had a big problem with sinking the boat, the slaying of the child and then not charging for the treasure and, and all the goods and, and riches. And each one he was busy trying to qualify his teacher big danger because he's coming to his teacher, he asked Allah I want to be taught and Allah I have one who will teach you, I will even grant him a, even a special secret to raise him to that darajat to be able to teach you. Sink the boat, he found a problem, why well, you did that? Can, you're not supposed to do that with your teacher. Slay the child, why'd you do that? Again found a problem because his intention was maybe to see that, I have a lot of knowledge, who is one of the ones that you are blessing and maybe uh, let me prove my knowledge is higher. Otherwise why was he finding fault in everything salam. Why did he come to say that, why is this, why is that, why is that? And this is the adabs of the tariqah teaching that, when you come into a mirror and you find fault, don't think it's the mirror because you haven't seen the mirror, 
you haven't even seen the reality of the mirror. And these are very purified souls. What you're finding fault in is something of your own existence. A Timeless Reality with Shaykh Nurjan Marahmadi Guides the Reader in Meditation Connecting the heart to a guide and to daily spiritual practices to understand the effects of positive and negative energy and to progress the reader in their spiritual awakening and the soul's connection to the world of light. The Divine's Ancient Timeless Reality. Order on Amazon.com are you ever searching for what zikr to recite for a particular need? We bring to you the Muhammadan Way app, an all-encompassing Islamic guide, where you can find special du'as and prayers, as well as comprehensive Islamic teachings. Download this powerful app now on iOS and Android. Why are you busy trying to discredit the teacher? Nabi Musa salam, when he asked, I came for knowledges, I thought you're going to sit me down and convey all your secrets to me. There was something of what he wasn't getting and finding fault. So then dealing with the mirror, it's Allah showing an adab, not the shaykh's teaching, Allah showing an adab. Then look from the great Prophet of Allah that he's going and asking for this uloom and this knowledge which is the, a shaykh in the Naqshbandi chain. So from whatever knowledge Sayyidina Khidr has, he gives it to the living shaykhs of this time. They inherit from his knowledge. Sayyidina Abbas Khidr is a supporter and the shaykh in the madad of the shaykhs of Naqshbandiyat al Aliya. So he has a, a, a reality to give. But the student's too preoccupied in trying to find something wrong with him until the teacher says that this dialogue of us arguing is not working. This is where me and you we part. Out of ihtiram and respect your big prophet and I, we have to stop this, it's like bickering. But before he let him go, he gave him the example because this is the mirror. This problem you had with me, Allah was showing you your own life. If you stop trying to find fault in the mirror and understood the reality, you would have seen Allah was showing you miraculously your own life. The boat you didn't like, your mom threw you in a boat, risked your life. Well, what mother would throw a child down a river in a basket? This boat is your analogy, not me because he's busy thinking Sayyidina Khidr's life, like why I have to accompany your life and, and see <laughs> these things. He said, you were accompanying my life. Allah was showing you your life, I was merely your guide to take you for it. But you didn't have the patience to see your life through me. The boy that you slew and you had all your objections, what about the man that you pushed? And the guard that you pushed, your Prophet of Allah how you committed a, an, an offense like that, that was your life. So that to show you sometimes there's a hikmah, Allah operates with a hikmah. Why to question it? You weren't questioned. Why are you questioning Allah's will here? It was your life because he's thinking again, he's following Sayyidina Khidr's life. And Sayyidina Khidr's teaching, no this is your life. Allah sent me here to give you these three examples, this is the miraculous nature of your life He's going to show you. And then the wall that we built and you wanted money for it and you're so upset about it, you went to the daughters of Shu'ayb and you watered their sheep and charged no fee for the hopes of the reward of a wife. You had no problem there. 
So when I'm telling you we have to build this for no fee because Allah will give our reward and these are to protect these children's their, their inheritance. Why you had a problem with it? This was you. You didn't have a problem when it was happening for your wife to have a, to have a marriage. So means that was an immense reality of Surat Al-Kahf and the Aina that when the student comes and meets a mu'min either from a distance doesn't have to meet in person anytime they deal with a mu'min and higher because from mu'min they go muhsin from muhsin they go mukhlas good god you need how many years of purification through your heart to see who that person is what station and where they're standing in their reality remember you came from out of nowhere in the woods having never looked at yourself with a real eye. You may have thought you were beautifully groomed for the Divinely Presence. As soon as you interact with the shaykhs they are the ayna, they are the mirror that Allah wants you to look at. And every interaction with them, every waswas that comes to you, everything you dislike, everything that is happening and why is like this, why is like this, what's like that, it's all your life that you're seeing. You're not seeing the shaykh, this is not the shaykh's life, it's your life that you see through the mirror. So that is an immense reality for us, all the interactions. Good God, now nobody has any ability to communicate, nobody has any eloquence in their communication, everybody's angry. Where the good khuluq of people that say, Alhamdulillah, bidnillah. Interact with these mirrors so that you can see who you are. Because Allah wants somebody clean, not somebody who thinks they can see you. Says Allah describe you have eyes but you don't see. We're not talking about dressing nicely with suits but Allah said, what's your spiritual dress? What's your spiritual reality? So that when you present it to my Divinely Presence I want to see the good character, the medallions of good character that are dressed upon your soul. I want to see the beautific heart, Allah doesn't look to the surah, doesn't look to your shaykh and to your form. Doesn't look to your wealth and status, oh this one has nice clothes let me look at him more. Allah looks to the heart of the believer. Maybe in completely decimated appearance physically but a heart like gold that's shining from Divinely light. That's all that Allah looks to. That you live the life in their mirror and you constantly fought and, and found your faults and every agitation you felt, every interaction that you felt, every, everything that you're feeling it's a story about you for the wise ones. And then they write, oh this like this and this like this and this is my life and I'm, I'm impatient, I'm, I'm agitated, I'm angry, all my things, all my characters. Because Allah said, I'm not going to call you to account of the shaykh and say, come on give us the report. Because Allah described when they were describing about Sayyidina Ibrahim, He said, the Jewish and Christian go together and say, Sayyidina Ibrahim is with us. Allah said, he's neither with you, neither with them, he's his own man, he's Hanif. You worry about your grave. I'm not calling you to account of who people are, what their actions were. I only want to know about you and your grave. So then the turuqs are immense reality of that hadith and that hadith is a symbol of why we need guidance. We need a life with a mirror, we need to interact and look into the mirror. Every interaction, every email, every activity that you involve yourself with, being online, getting angry why they didn't answer my questions, getting angry with the response from the questions, sending an email and say, I've sent an email and you didn't reply. So what? 
we weren't the, you weren't the president of the heavens and nobody replied, send it again, send it again and patiently wait until something comes. But it shows in the character Allah sees you have impatience, you have hidden angers, you have all these issues Allah wants them resolved. And then imagine the, the very powerful mirror in which you do your muraqabah. We say, Ya Rabbi, want that mirror all the time. And the people who are hesitant to take the step, in the middle of the late at night, everyone's sleeping, everyone's out of the way. Pray your Salat al Isha late. Sit here at Rosa Sharif, put some salawats, and just ask yourself to be in the presence of Prophet and with the shaykh. I'm asking for my shaykh to be present and that his nazar be upon me, his presence to be in front of me. That is the mirror that begins to reflect. And with that light in front of me, what have I done wrong? What is my bad character? Why was I angry? Why did I do? You can lie to yourself but you cannot lie to them. They're the mirror of truth that comes to be present with you in the meditation and say, no this was wrong, this was wrong, this was wrong and that's the hisab, muhasaba. Because their light comes and the more you're able to connect and the more you're able to be consistent with it, that is the light of your muhasaba, your accounting. Because their light is there and you're now, yes I, I, I feel that was wrong, I, I feel that what I said was wrong, my character was wrong, I did get angry. And then you write it that tomorrow inshaAllah be better or for one week you're in the same issue then you know you're not doing better, something's wrong. Then I'm going to penalize myself and I'm going to do more this, more that, more that. So that you understand what you're doing wrong and it stops. Otherwise you just keep, keep, keep and then nothing's happening. We pray that Allah give us an understanding of these realities and what Allah won't address us and bless us with of these immense realities and to perfect ourselves to reach towards these lights and this holy heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Subhanahu wa rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifun wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. If money could just grow on trees, there would be no need for this message. Since it doesn't, let us show you where your generous donations are going. We film, edit, and produce weekly television shows of divinely knowledge throughout Canada and the UK. As well as live stream internationally on Facebook and YouTube. Sheikh Nurjan's ever-growing online presence is the result of continuous financial input and with your financial assistance and participation, this rapid growth will continue. Our Muhammadan Way app is continuously being upgraded and improved, providing an all-encompassing Islamic guide. In addition to the Muhammadan Way app, NurMuhammad.com is a website of immense knowledge and comprehensive Islamic teachings that is updated daily. Your ongoing support also enables a team of editors to compile books of heavenly wisdom from Sheikh Nurjan's teachings. One of our longest ongoing initiatives has been to provide basic necessities to the most in need worldwide. From feeding people in Vancouver's downtown east side, to clothing LA's homeless community, and supporting a children's orphanage in Pakistan. 
your ongoing donations will help us continue to spread the love and example of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. Become a shareholder in immense blessings. NurMuhammad.com forward slash donate.